sometimes it's, it's well-intentioned. It's just misguided. And in some of these scenarios, there was just no guidance at all. So it can't even say it was misguided. There just wasn't any. I really studied this and I made some notes for this podcast, but one of them is the anti-intellectual movement that JP Moreland talks about in the church. Um, that happened early 1900s, I believe, late 1800s. And there's this separation. Like, why does someone have to go to seminary to learn how to read a Bible? Like, it just, there's this separation. And so what I'm asking, what our hearts are, is we've seen friends leave Christianity um, because of hurts and different things. And and someone's like, well, yeah, but maybe they weren't believers to begin with, or they just write it off of. But no, like, we have some responsibility to do this better and learn from mistakes and learn from experiences and I'm not here to throw stones at something I'm not a part of. I want to be a part of the solution. Um, that's why I'm so passionate about um, curriculum like Foundation Worldview that's out there. That's one mama bear apologetics. Um, there's a lot of great people who are like, let's train up our youth differently. Let's equip them in a different way. I know, Lemon, you're all about that as well. And I just see the importance of it because of the experiences I've had of being in the church and how, yes, I did have my behavior changed and I did meet God and I became a Christian and I knew the spirit and I wanted to go serve my community. Um, but without all of it holistically, it could be a, a fire burning with, with no boundaries and it could burn everything and in, including people. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like that example, right? Cause fire could fire can be used to warm our homes. They can be used to feed us. They can mm. be very nourishing and comforting or it can destroy you know, entire, you know, like parks or suburbs or whatever. Yeah. It, can, it can burn a whole house mm. down. How do you think these, this experience or this combination of experiences still impacts you today in a tough way? Like whether not necessarily harmful, maybe that's too strong, but where it's, it's a challenge, it presents challenges still. Some scars I have from this experience is finding a church home and being around other believers. I find that my passions and the things that I care about now, um, they're kind of niche in a sense, which is sad, but I will talk about apologetics or I'll talk about different things. And I just feel like they're hit with deaf ears. Um, and so I struggle to find friendships. I struggle to find a church home and make those deep relationships through this experience which was nothing I never, I always made friends. Like I was able to get 40 young adults, male young adults in a room together. And I remember at the time they're like, usually it's co-ed because people want to be around the opposite sex <laughs> at this age. So I never had a problem getting together with people and interacting and socializing. But after this experience, I just felt the divide even more is how I would describe it between the church and the seminary. And that has been part of our journey as a couple too, mm -hmm. you know, of like, who are those, what does that church home look like? What do those relationships look like? Yeah. And I know I've mentioned that before and Lemon probably in some conversations with you too about, okay, yeah, I came out of a cult that I grew up in, but things weren't great after that either. Um, and so this, you know, brings more light to what I refer to. Um, I did not have great mainstream Christian experiences either. And we're not even getting into the, you know, attempts of some women to be my new mama and not doing that well. And, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and so sometimes it's, it's well-intentioned, it's just misguided. And in some of these scenarios, there was just no guidance at all. So it can't even say it was misguided. There just wasn't any, um, and we just, we don't know who's in our congregation. I mean, think about that. I know we've talked about that a little bit too, of people like us walk into churches and people that are already in there don't know. And then when they find out, they don't necessarily know what to do. And I don't fault them for that at all. If no one has, has had the conversation. And so again, opening up these conversations of, we do have people walking into churches with some really traumatic histories. And I mean the word trauma when I say it. And how do we come alongside them in a way that acknowledges their experience, acknowledges their, their lived experience, their stories, and 
loves them well in that and allows them patience, gives them the time that they need to ask the questions they have to ask and to feel even safe enough to do that. Because at first I couldn't even engage with people. It's like, I just want to come in and get lost here, good teaching and leave. Mm -hmm. And so it took time to even be willing to talk to somebody. And so to go through these back-to-back experiences, they've, they've definitely left a mark. Mm -hmm. It's, I wouldn't even say we're fully on the other side of it all yet, because again, at least for me, it compounded. Yep. And so committing to a church home is something that it can still be hard for me. It takes time to really feel safe somewhere. Mm -hmm.